So I'm back working on the power draw bar project. And in the previous video, I showed you the power draw bar. And again, the plans and stuff for this are on HaasMachine.com. I spent the last week or so working on these tool holders. I don't think you can have quite enough tool holders. I've got about 9 or 10, and that's going to work for me right now. Uh, these are also, plans for these are also on HaasMachine.com, but I kind of modified mine for my own purpose. Uh, the ones for the smaller bits, the eighth of an inch bits and, and end mills and stuff, I, I made sh quite a bit shorter than the ones for the bigger bits. And that was just to save a little material, and I just didn't see the need for all that extra meat. I uh, also made a drill chuck adapter for, uh, this is a JT2. So I got all that. I think I've got everything I, I need, and for now anyways. And I've also been working on a manual tool change macro. Now, I looked on several different forums to try to find a manual tool change macro that would work the way I wanted it to. And I didn't find it, but what I did find was a lot of information that I could use to make my own. So in order to do the tool change macro, you just go up to Operator in Mach 3, uh, VB, Visual Basic Script Editor, and open up your file that says M6 Start. Now in your file, if you don't have, you may not have anything in there. But what we have is the one that I modified here. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to add a DRO on your settings screen right here. Just add this DRO and I gave it the number of 1224 but this is the tool that's in the spindle DRO and I'll show you about that in a minute. Um, so it's gonna we're gonna get the old tool and that's to get the tool in the DRO we just added. Then we're also going to get the tool change start position for your X, Y, and your Z coordinates. And that is so that when we end this tool change, it will return back to the original position that it started. Uh, we're going to do a G53 move, which is move in machine coordinates to G, I mean, to Z minus two zero. So that's our tool change position. And then we're going to tell it to wait while it's moving. Then once it moves, we're going to get the selected tool. That's the tool in the code, the G code to be changed to. We're going to rename that new tool. We're going to set the new DRO, the tool in spindle DRO that we talked about earlier, to the new, new tool. And we're also going to get the G43, which is the offsets for the tools. So we're going to set the new tool offsets from zero so that the new tool, will, we won't have to re-zero the new tool as long as you have them set up in your tool offsets. Now, now I wanted to once once I wanted it I wanted Mach 3 to prompt me for my new tool. So I put in here a dialog box and that's what this is right here this is just to verify the tool change is complete and it's a dialog box that I programmed in and then after the dialog box prompts and it tells you to change to the new tool that you have set up in your g-code then it's going to put a message in your message box down here 
and it's going to give you the message new tool it's going to give the tool number and a description of the tool so let's run the program for the manual tool change and you'll see exactly what we're talking about here so basically what we're going to do is we're just going to come down we're going to start the tool chain or this is just a little program that I made up it's going to move to the tool change position which I have mine set at minus two inches two inches down from zero and then it's going to give me a message box that says tool change requested please insert tool number four uh, 1.25 inch four flute end mill so I've already got that tool actually in there so we'll put that tool and then we just select OK and this was just to give me the reason I wanted to put this message box up here was to give me a pause in the program to allow me to change the tool and also verify for me what tool I'm supposed to put in there uh, and so this was the easiest and the best way I thought to do that so click OK and then all you have to do now is just hit cycle start and then it's going to move the tool down I've got it set to ten thousandths above the work surface here did its little program routine and moved back up to the tool change position and then it tells me to insert tool number five tool number five is a 0.25 inch four flute end mill we're going to grab our 0.25 inch four flute end mill put it in lock it in click ok then again hit cycle start down just above the work surface do its program go back up ask for the next tool change which is number six uh, 0.375 inch two flute end mill and as you can see these are all different tool heights these are all different heights and uh, you just set those up in the work offset and now one one thing I want to show you is when I hit OK it's going to put a message down here at the bottom letting me know that I've inserted this tool it happens real quick because it only happens while it's moving but I wanted to put that in there I'm still working on that I'd like to get a have it display that message a little longer but uh, for me it's okay because I know what tool I put it in there and then again just hit cycle start program's gonna start go down ten thousandths above the work surface because that's what I have to set up at go back to the tool change position and ask you for the next tool so as you can see, let me turn this fan. As you can see, that's basically how it works uh, in the program. And I thought that this would be the best way to do manual tool changes. Uh, it gives you the pause. The dialog box gives you the pause and allows you to tool the cha uh, change the tool. If you happen to get interrupted during the run, uh, as I often do by my daughter or my wife, then you can just leave that up there and it'll stay in that state until you click OK and restart the cycle start the program again. Uh, if anyone's interested in this tool change macro, um, let me know. Now down here at this last line, as I told you, it says message. This is a message that puts in the message box down there. It's, it's going to get the current tool. It's going to give a description of the current tool and then it's just going to say installed returning to tool change start position and then once uh, it displays that message then it's going to rapid move uh, to the X 
Y and Z tool change start positions. It's going to go back to the tool change start position minus the offset from G43. Uh, I, th I think it's going to come in handy. Uh, I, I like the fact that it gives you the dialog box. Uh, it prompts you to put for which tool to insert into the meal. So what works for me, you can modify this macros uh, however you want. One thing I want to point out is in the beginning we're getting the tool change start position and at the end we're moving back to the original tool change start position. If you check your M6 end macro, there may be a program in there like this. This is like a default macro that's in there on some versions. Just put a and that will turn it into just a message and then that way it won't run that program. If you don't have that in there you can see it turns into an actual line of code so, <clears throat> so it's best not to have anything in your M6 end if you're running that, or you can delete it in the M6 tool change macro and use the M6 end macro. It does the same thing. Uh, just moves the tool back to your M6 uh, tool change start position. Thanks for watching the video. I uh, hope it's helpful to somebody. Uh, I didn't see, I saw several different. Uh, ways of doing this and read several different uh, read several different ideas on manual tool changes uh, auto zeroing but if you set up your tool table if you set up your tool table offsets for your different tools then it's really a lot simple than having to worry about it. Uh, just set up your tool table and it'll put the offset for whatever tools in there. This is tool number four. The offset is 1.62 inches from zero. Uh, makes life a lot simpler. Seems to be working fine. Like I said, if anyone's interested in the macro, uh, shoot me an email and I'll email it to you. Uh, not a problem. Thanks for watching.